A surge drum is an important component in some refrigeration systems, particularly in large industrial ammonia systems. These vessels are also called accumulators and are used to manage refrigerant flow and ensure proper liquid vapor separation. Positioned between the evaporator and the compressor, a surge drum acts as a buffer vessel that collects and distributes liquid refrigerant while preventing liquid carryover into the compressor, which could cause damage. As with other vessels, surge drums can be designed for horizontal or vertical orientation. Surge drums typically receive liquid from a high pressure receiver. An expansion valve expands the high pressure liquid into a low temperature, low pressure liquid as it enters the vessel. The liquid feed valve group will be configured with a solenoid valve that is interlocked with a float switch to automatically control the level in the vessel. The surge drum then supplies, by gravity, low pressure liquid to one or more evaporators. Because of this configuration, evaporators that are supplied by a surge drum are said to be gravity fed or flooded. Liquid and vapor returned from the evaporators is separated inside the surge drum to allow only the vapor to be returned to the compressors. In small systems, the surge drum may be used to directly supply vapor to the compressors. Larger systems will be equipped with a suction accumulator to separate out any liquid droplets that may escape the surge drum. So in this video, I'm going to give an overview of kind of like a typic, typical flooded uh, surge drum, which is also sometimes called an accumulator, like you see in the label here. Okay, this is a, a vessel that feeds liquid by gravity to an evaporator. Now you can't see the evaporator. I'm standing on the roof right now. The vessel's uh, mounted to the roof. The evaporator would be underneath us inside the cold storage space. So let's start with the liquid side. We have liquid coming in here through this orange pipe. This is high pressure liquid from the receiver that passes through um, the, this group of valves and eventually uh, feeds, feeds the vessel. And what we have here is a globe valve. This is just an isolation valve followed by a strainer, which is simply a filter um, to protect our control valve. In this case, is a solenoid valve. A solenoid valve is a type of on-off control valve that's electrically controlled by this coil in here, energized and de-energized for on-off function. Um, notice the next valve here has this key handle on it. Um, that's an indication that that's a hand expansion valve. So that's where our point of expansion is that's, that's um, changing our warm liquid ammonia into cold liquid ammonia. And then finally, we have another isolation valve um, afterwards. So if you need to work on these valve groups, we can isolate, um, you know, remove ammonia through the strainer in this case to safely work on the valves. This one also has a bypass line. Not, not everyone will, but that's in case this is being worked on. You could, you could run this without the automated control using this bypass hand expansion valve. Following the pipe here, and following the pipe here, you notice it ties in here into the, this is the suction return line coming from the evaporator. So underneath us, we have evaporator. We're feeding liquid through that pipe there, liquid supplying to the evaporator. The uh, mixture of vapor and maybe some liquids returning, that's where we, we also supply the liquid in that line, into that uh, line which fills this vessel. Now, we've got our, our float column here with a couple of float switches. Um, the lower of the switch is the operating level float switch. And this float switch has a ball inside of it and this is interlocked with this solenoid valve. So as the, le as the level rises and gets, gets to this uh, switch position, it's gonna cause the solenoid valve to de-energize or shut off. As the level drops, it's gonna engage this so that the solenoid valve opens to refill the vessel, okay? So that it maintains a, uh, a constant level at the float switch position. Um, this one, you won't always see this, but also has a high level uh, float. And in this system, there actually is a suction accumulator. So this isn't even necessary, but it's a nice feature to have. For, if for whatever reason, this valve gets stuck open, or there's some abnormality so that the liquid level becomes unacceptably high, and it reaches this, this is, um, interlocked with their PLC to alert a monitored uh, location so that they can um, come and deal with whatever the situation might be. All right, notice on the top of the vessel, we do have a relief valve assembly. Every pressure vessel um, um, that has an ASME stamp must be equipped with a relief assembly. That's a dual relief valve assembly. We have a three-way relief isolation valve and two relief valves. Only one of the relief valves, it should be active at any time. The dual assembly is so that it can be changed out without having to pump down the entire vessel while still providing overpressure protection. 
Um, one of the functions of the surge drum slash accumulator is to separate liquid from vapor. Liquid's gonna fall to the bottom, be resupplied to the evaporator, while vapor goes to the top. And there, that way we only get or primarily get dry vapor, not liquid, going through the suction uh, valve group, going, which goes back to the machine room, in this case to the suction accumulator and then compressors. We, we prefer the liquid to stay here. So let's go through these valve groups. We have an isolation valve. This is an angle style globe valve, okay? followed by a strainer, very similar to the strainer we already saw down here, except it's a bigger diameter. And now we have a, a pressure regulating valve. This is often called a back pressure regulator or an inlet pressure regulator because it is regulating the pressure on the inlet side or regulating the pressure for our vessel. All right, and, this, and then we have another isolation valve, okay? The two isolation valves, of course, can be closed so the valve can be worked on and, and so forth. Now, this pressure regulator, um, is, a, is kind of a, a very important component in this system in that it has this motor on it, we call this a mod motor, which is um, uh, capable of being, being adjusted automatically from the PLC or temperature controller remotely. So as they want a new temperature in the room, they can change the settings, that will cause this motor to adjust this, this uh, cam and follower to actually adjust the, the regulator um, spring tension, which is going to change the pressure in this vessel. We know that pressure and temperature are correlated. So as we change the pressure, we can, we can pinpoint our, our temperature. So from here, all these pipes tie back into mains, which are heading that direction, uh, back to our machine room and the cycle continues. When a refrigeration system is designed for flooded liquid feed configuration, it is not uncommon for there to be numerous surge drums. Each vessel will have its own inlet or back pressure regulator, which will allow for fine tuning the pressure and temperature at the surge drums associated evaporators. There is an advantage to utilizing a gravity flooded surge drum type system um, that, that is important to think about. Um, and that is that when each evaporator, or let's say set of evaporators is supplied by its own surge drum, it provides an opportunity for more precise temperature control. So if we look at a refrigeration system, it has a machinery room where compressors are, are kind of setting the house suction pressure. That's kind of the lowest available suction pressure and temperature that's, that's out there for the evaporators. But if you have different rooms that are supplied by different surge drums, you can um, install inlet or back pressure regulators to modulate that suction pressure or evaporator pressure at that given zone of any level above the house suction pressure. So this, this is widely employed like where I live in the San Joaquin Valley of California where, where there's a lot of cold storage warehousing for fresh, fresh fruit, fruits and vegetables that may have um, differing ideal temperatures where you want um, you know 31 degrees in, in room one but you'd like to see 37 degrees in room five and that can be, be accomplished using a surge drum type system. Because each surge drum must maintain a liquid level to properly flood the evaporators, this type of liquid feed arrangement requires more refrigerant than direct expansion or pumped overfeed systems. Furthermore, each surge drum and its associated pipes and valves is an added expense when installing a new system. So let me give you an overview of how a surge drum is typically arranged. Um, I have depicted up here uh, a simple gravity flooded surge drum. Sometimes surge drums are called accumulators. Those are synonyms, so it could go with either word. Um, and so we are uh, feeding high pressure liquid uh, through a solenoid valve and expansion valve, typically on an industrial ammonia system, that's a hand expansion valve, into our surge drum. Now the level in this vessel is controlled typically by a, by a float switch, which might be called an operating level float switch. That's a ball float, which makes a contact based on level so that this can, can uh, maintain a, a, a perfect level that, that's desired for the system. Um, there are other options. It could be a level probe, but, but more often than not, it is a float switch just like this. So as the level drops, it tells the solenoid to open, uh, refrigerant liquid enters the vessel and then it gravity feeds through our pipe and into our evaporator and the evaporator becomes flooded with liquid, hence the term flooded evaporator. The uh, uh, surge drum or accumulator always has to be located above the evaporator because it needs gravity to supply that liquid. So that is one of the defining features of a surge drum arrangement. 
inside the evaporator as heat is absorbed. Refrigerant will um, evaporate on vapor, leave, leave the evaporator and be supplied back to the surge drum where the vapor then can be supplied back to our machine room and the compressors. Now, I've depicted here that in my blue line, a suction pipe going all the way back to our compressor. And sometimes that is the way it's set up. If that were the case, however, I should have a high level float switch on this vessel because we need to make sure if the level gets too high, we protect our compressors. So more often than not, in, a, in any system of even, even medium to large size, you're going to see a suction accumulator in, in the system where all of the surge drums, let's say there's five, 10 surge drums, will terminate back into the suction accumulator. When that's the case, it looks a bit more like this. You erase my blue line here. Okay, and we see instead that our, um, that our wet suction, our blue pipe, will go back into this vessel. And that allows any little, any little liquid droplets to settle at the bottom of this vessel, go through a transfer system usually, and then we'll come off the top with our perfectly dry vapor, and that's what gets supplied to our compressor. Okay, so more often than not, that's how the surge drum setup ends up looking. If it was a single surge drum, you wouldn't need a suction accumulator, you just put on a high level float switch. But once you have multiple, it's very common for it to be arranged just as depicted here.